preparing to live stream. All right, we are okay. live. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Life School Community Networking event where we have our community experts share more regarding their background and the work they do in the world with the main purpose of inspiring and educating one another through the nurturing of hard driven relationships so that new beautiful opportunities for collaborations, brand building and clients can arise. This is the hub where all hard driven entrepreneurs build high level meaningful relationships and the innovation of strategic partnerships. All of those are really important in our businesses, especially being service providers. Uh, I talk about this very often, how important is this to actually nurture our relationship, build trust with one another, um, and really open up our minds and, and whatever we do in our business journey to allow for beautiful collaborations um, so that we can make a bigger impact in the world. So uh, that's always our main goal as entrepreneurs. So I have two of my amazing community experts uh, joining me today, um, and I'm looking forward to introduce them to you also through our beautiful community of entrepreneurs. So I will start with Tina Kadish. Kadish, did I? Kadish. I hope Kadish. I didn't butcher your last name. That's okay. Tina Kadish. <laughs> Tina is an amazing expert in helping women go from jobs to entrepreneurship, go from nine to five to entrepreneurship. I wish I would have known Tina <laughs> six years ago when that very scary transition happened and you just don't know where to start and there's so much fear behind that journey, but you, you come out on the other side and you realize that it was, you know, it was going to be fulfilling and it needed to be done, especially for a lot of women that might hear that inner voice saying that there's something more, you got to take a different direction. But because of the, you know, fear, we kind of just push it down. I pushed it down for two years. <laughs> you know, I just, in a, I kind of ignored it in a, in a positive way or in a negative way, because I, I, you know, I'm like, oh, I have to make a change. I don't know. I'm so scared. So <laughs> that's what Tina does. Tina, welcome. Uh, welcome to our event today. And I'm looking forward to, if you could share with us a little bit, um, I guess the most meaningful points in your journey that led you to the work that you're doing now. And also I'm looking forward to you sharing a little bit around your framework on how do you help women, maybe like me over a couple of years ago, to go from full-time job, employee mindset to entrepreneurship. All right. Thank you so much for being here, uh, for uh, inviting me to be here. Uh, I'm Tina Kadish from Job to Joy. I'm a business coach and author. And my journey started when I got laid off. So I was in transition and, and this is where I had the uncertainty, the fear of what now. And I was in the training and development industry, loved my job and, but found myself for the first time ever. So that's when I started really researching, what did I want to do next? And many of us um, here that are listening here may be in that journey where, okay, now what? We might be in a space where we want to reinvent ourselves. We don't want to go to the office and work. We want to have freedom. I'm all about freedom and flexibility. My, my book, my first book is about freedom, the seven steps to thrive. And so I discovered that over 85% of women are unfulfilled. They're stuck. They're unhappy with where they are, but they stay there. They don't even know what to do. That's the thing. They don't have any direction. So I learned of a tool that I help women discover their five top passions. So it's a passion tool that I started my business with. And I that's how I began. And because I wanted to share the message that you can find your purpose, but you need clarity, you need direction. And then I evolved into a business coach. And today I'm a business coach. So I take women that are in that space. And how do we start a business? My framework is I have an eight step or eight parts of my business blueprint, where I walk you through eight steps to starting a business that will bring you the clients that you deserve, that you want. And so I, my framework is about finding your vision. What is your value? Um, who are your clients? What are your programs and services that, how are you going to show up in the, in the marketplace? And what keeps us is fear. And so I created a program called Success Incubator that really helps you with doing the inner work because it begins here. So as women are going through that transition, I help them doing the inner work so that they can be more successful with their business. 
And because it's not just, okay, I want to start a business. A lot of times, yeah, we have the strategies, but do we have this? Do we have the, um, the belief in ourselves? You know, uh, we have the doubt and that imposter syndrome, you know, that we just don't think we can do it. And that was me. That was me. And I was working my business part-time, working full-time because I did go back to a job because of fear until 2018. Until then, now I'm a full-time entrepreneur and I help you with that process of how can you start a successful business and still overcoming, helping you to overcome those challenges that you might have. So that's a little bit about me. Tina, you do such amazing work because I remember in those first two years, uh, without the support of a mentor, you it's so easy to quit because you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. It is a new journey. And a lot of times in entrepreneurship, and I would love to hear your perspective about it, when you have that employee mindset, you're used to, I guess, instant gratification because the work you do, you get paid for. You get a paycheck at the end of the week or two weeks or month. Yes. But entrepreneurship is a different thing. You know, you might even be working for those first two years with not a lot of return um, as far as income is concerned, right? Because you're still new, you're learning, you're growing, There's not you lack experience, you don't always know like what is the next thing. So as you are growing and evolving, of course, a lot of times your income and the results monetarily, I guess, are not always there. So for, for that is you know, how do you now switch your mindset to think long-term and tie back to that vision that you said um, to keep yourself motivated in the day-to-day because you don't see results. You're like, I'm working so hard, but I have nothing to show for it. <laughs> I know. And we're all there as an entrepreneur. We're there. I, you know, when I, and, and it's true, I had the employee mindset every two weeks I was getting a paycheck and now I'm the CEO of my life. I'm in the driver's seat. I it's up to me to make it happen, not waiting for it to happen, come to me. So I really had to shift my mind, my own mindset, but I aligned myself with a community where I can get the support. I worked with mentors. I hired a coach. I couldn't do it alone. I tried to do it alone. And I got all the, the freebies and all of us, you know, yes, we don't have a budget and we're doing the freebies and understandable. But when we're doing all those things on our own, we don't know what we're doing wrong. So we don't have that direction, that accountability. I need accountability. Okay. I love to be, you know, okay, this is what we need to do and hold yourself accountable. That's why I love, like, this is a community where I've connected with Alona and other people. How can we help each other? You know, and, but one thing that kept me going is knowing my, why was I doing this? And so really one of the things that I help my clients is, is figuring out their why. What is it that you desire? What is it that you want to bring? What excites you every day that you would do it no matter what? And even through the obstacles that we go through, those challenges, when you're not making money, I'll be honest with you, you're not going to make money, but you got to keep working it, never quit, never quit, okay? And then make, make changes. Like when I first started my business, I was only... Uh, offering my passion tool. It wasn't sustainable. I said, okay, what can I do? That's why I went back to work because I said, ah, this ain't working, but I'm going to work it part-time until I, what I was happening was I was referring people to business coaches. Well, I became one so that I could help with the framework that today that I help and that I learned it myself. I did it, everything I teach. I've gone through myself. Okay, I don't just take something from a shelf and then, oh, it's mine. No, I don't do that. So everything I've gone through myself, I teach. So, um, but yeah, Alona, that's a very valid, valid thing. I I love what you said there. Everything is through experience, but again, we're always growing as well as coaches, right? So we always I always talk about how I did the same. I changed a couple of niches, I guess, or pivoting in the business because you just learn more and you align, you know, your your offer and your messaging to sort of how can you create more value in the marketplace for your ideal person that you want to help. 
And maybe at the beginning, all starts with, I started with, you know, private, like uh, 60 minute coaching sessions, very general, <laughs> yep. Yep. right? And then you just kind of like get laser focused as you go and get laser focused and then you develop a framework. And then eventually you have, you know, something that you could take people through that can create transformation and results because at the end of the day, that's really what's important for people. So, right. Right. Uh, but not to that, I guess that would be the message for women that might be still in a corporate uh, world. I would also recommend the practicality side of things. If you can keep your income, mm -hmm. do that. You don't want to have the fear, the lack as you are building something amazing, which will take time. And I love that you tie them to that bigger vision and that bigger why. I always say, if your why doesn't make you cry, then get a new why because the journey, you know, it's not going to be easy, right? You're going to have to be building. And a lot of times it's, uh, you build yourself through the business as well. So having that bigger why keeps you hanging in, in those days where you just feel like, you know, quitting. But I think accountability is big. Just is. having a coach, someone that can, you could just run things through. And I love that you said that when you are learning passively on your own, you don't always see the gaps because you're in it. Exactly. Right? So you do you need someone that can take you and be like, here's the most important part that you need to focus on in this phase and stage so you could get to the next thing. And that refocus, I think it's it's a very important value in the work that most coaches do. So yes, thank for you. For sure. Absolutely. Tina, so uh, where can people, where is your best content? Where do you offer value through your content? Where can people find out more about the work that you do? Awesome. On my website, um, from job to joy .com. I have everything there to connect with me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook as well. I have a couple of free offers on my website that you can actually um, take my uh, eight step process. I have a, a checklist there. The must haves of having a successful uh, business. So you can grab a copy there. And um, I rebranded last year from Job to Joy's my new name. It was uh, Life is Ideal was my former name. So you might see Life is Ideal out in the universe. It is now from Job to Joy. And I offer 30-minute complimentary calls. I also offer an hour strategy sessions. Uh, let's connect and let's see where it goes. I'd love to collaborate as well and where I can add value and share resources. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you have a, a free Facebook group as well where people can get to I know don't you? have a, I have a business page. So from job to joy is my business page. So connect with me there as well. And I do have an inner circle that I just created um, that I host weekly Tuesday night events for women that are in this space. And it is a, a membership uh, opportunity where they can come in and they get uh, topics every week on entrepreneurship, personal development, and I will bring speakers in and you get coaching with me. So I just started that a couple of months ago. So I'm excited called From Job to Joy Inner Circle is my uh, All right. membership. So join Tina's community, whether Thank it's the, you so much. the business page for sure. And we all will do it here because support starts with, it's not what we say, it's the actions we take, right? So it starts here in the small room, and then it grows, you know, to other people. But I do find that, you know, we have to surround ourselves Thanks. with the right aligned people around us. Because even if we're trying to build relationships, it's not just one done, one and done, right? It's about surrounding ourselves with each other's work. So then when the right offer and the right moment in time, we can support one another. That's kind of how it works. Because I might sure. be in a, focusing on something different right now, but later on, the more I see, you know, what you're doing and what everyone is doing, the more I'm like, can connect the dots for people be like, okay, I think this, you need to speak to Sarah, you need to speak to Tina, right? So that's kind of how things work. That's why we need to give it time to build meaningful relationships. And a lot of times with instant gratification, we learn this sometimes the hard way that, you know, we, we got to really put in the time to invest. So we do. Um, you'll have all the links. Everyone that's going to listen to this is going to have all the links. Um, Thank you. So that you can easily and find Tina. Thank you, Tina. Pleasure Thank as you. always. Thank you. Amazing. Now I want to uh, introduce you guys to Cree uh, Rodden, an amazing holistic health coach. She takes the uh, holistic approach to health and we all know health is our wealth. So uh, Corey, welcome back. And um, 
because this video usually goes to new people that are always watching, right? So I know maybe we, you kind of introduced yourself before, but I always find that a small introduction is still kind of, you know, um, keeps, keeps you top of mind for the people that, you know, want to connect with you. And I would love to hear a little bit more regarding your framework as well, just like I asked Tina. So welcome back, Corey. Oh, sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me, Alona. Um, my journey started um, quite a long time ago. I love the field of health. Um, actually, over 40 years ago, um, I had gone away to uh, college. And just for that short time, for the few years, I had gained weight. Um, I didn't like, um, you know, the food that was there. It was it was at that certain point in time in life. Um, we would just, you know, uh, eat, eat in anything, but not knowing how to prepare anything. <laughs> so that kind of thing. So from that point on, when I had left um, college, I took the weight off myself. You know, I was always uh, in shape and exercised. But just from that point on, um, and I didn't diet. I just went on a path, um, just ate healthy, exercised, and got into meditation and was on that path, you know, up, up till now. And then about 20, I'd say 1997 to 2000, I got certified in nutrition and polarity therapy and was doing it part-time. And I wanted, you know, to get into you know, the health field. I was doing it for a while. And then, of course, you know, not seeing so many results, I went back into corporate. And um, after 2008, it was big changes everywhere. So I wasn't able to get into the work I was doing. Um, and I pursuing more entrepreneurial things, um, you know, diff all different types of things. And then um, I got into a group where they were writing books. And I didn't think of myself as a writer um, a long time back. I just never did. But when I stumbled on it, I just really loved the mentor and the people in the group. And I said, okay, let me write about, uh, I, I love personal development. And the mentor at the time said, well, that's the hardest thing to teach people. So he, he suggested to write something else. And I said, well, I love holistic health. So I started on my journey then, which is 2013, and, you know, writing about holistic health. I wasn't able to get it published till two years ago. And um, I said, you know what, I have to finish what I start. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing. And I think it's just so important for everyone. Um, just from that point in time of 40 years ago, of just gaining that weight, you know, you don't want to fluctuate going back and forth. Um, like Alona said, your, your health is everything. Your health is your wealth. Um, so I've just been on it and I, I totally love it. And I, I love helping women, um, entrepreneurs or not, um, with their health, well-being, um, using holistic modalities. You know, it doesn't take long every day and you don't have to do it seven times a week. Um, for myself, because that's what I experienced myself, you could do it, you know, four to five times a week, meaning eating healthy and exercising and getting in that right, that right mindset is really to begin with. So when I say meditation, it's really getting into that right mindset of like with anything to get yourself started, no matter what it is, any kind of a, a goals you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And I just I totally love it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love how your book came about. So uh, holistic health is such like a big area. So maybe sometimes people when they hear that, it's like, where do I start? Like, I'm just, you know, we always kind of want to do the the drop a few pounds, like look better, lose weight. <laughs> That's usually like the marketing <laughs> language behind that. But this is so much more. It's a whole lifestyle. It's the way you look, feel and all of the, you know, all of the components of our lives. Right. So yes. So, uh, in, in your book, what is the title of your book? And also, what are some of the topics that you teach people regarding this area in there? Sure. The name of the book is called How to Look Younger Naturally. And um, 
the chapters are like, I'll have about aromatherapy oils, um, cleansing the body by juicing and fasting. Um, then there's meditation and yoga. Um, there's sound and music therapy. There's, um, you know, and I match some of the, cha- uh, some of the chapters, Reiki and massage, um, chakra balancing, using, you know, different types of um, uh, chakra uh, crystals and, and uh, healing stones. Hmm. Wow, there's such interesting topics to get into. And all of that, I love how you put it all together in a book. And all of that is, you know, helps people with their overall health, for sure. So um, definitely go grab your book. Is it on Amazon, Corey? It is. Yes. And the title of it is? uh, The title of it is How to Look Younger Naturally. All right. So you're definitely going to share a link uh, of the how to get the copy of your book there. And um, I know you have a really great offer right now because people are still thinking about their health goals and I hope they are right. I mean, uh, it's not, not even, it's at the end of January. Oh my God. Like January is like rolling around Was well, statistically Google wise, right? Cause I was looking at these statistics, uh, cause I, I participated in a show where I talked about how to achieve our goals. And I think 9% of the people that set goals, um, are probably still focusing on those goals, especially their health goals and keeping up with them for the entire, for the rest of the year. So I know you have a really great offer with um, offering people a free health analysis session where you can help them. Tell me a little bit more regarding that. What are you offering for people? Yes, sure. I'm offering a free um, 60 minute health analysis session um, that's personalized Mm -hmm. um, to each person that'll help you with eating, exercising, and meditating, you know, getting in the right mindset. Perfect. Awesome. Definitely taking advantage of that because even the awareness and the clarity you get is golden, I always say. Um, Corey, what what is your Facebook group community called? Oh, yes. And um, you can find me too on Facebook, um, Health and Vitality for Entrepreneurs. I'm also on LinkedIn. And my website um, is my full name, um, which is Corinne, C-O-R-I-N-N-E, Rodin, R-O-D-I-N dot com. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Corinne, for everything you shared. And definitely go check out Corinne um, with taking care of this very important area. I, I always say we can't work on our missions, our purpose without our health. Um, so, Yeah. You offer a lot of great value for sure. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you. Awesome. And Tina, I know if you have to leave, just go ahead and and go. I will tag you everywhere so people can get you the links to all the amazing you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Yes, you too. Bye. Awesome. So Sarah Bakari is next. Sarah, welcome back to the community event. You are one of our experts in social media marketing. However, I know you are now definitely offering a little more value for the community as well. So love to hear a little bit more regarding what you are focusing on, what is it that you do, and also what is your framework that you can share with us today? Thank you for having me today. Sorry, I had some technical difficulty in the beginning to join, so but I was able to finally make it. Um, so my journey kind of started. Um, uh, I was uh, working as a business analyst before I became a, um, a mother. So after uh, my kids were born, I stopped working. I um, with corporate and. Um, kind of stayed home for a while to take care of my kids. And while I was at home, I thought about um, starting my own business. So it's about like five, six years ago when I started um, my coaching business. And to be honest, a, it was really a struggle at the beginning, not only that I wasn't aware of uh, all the challenges a business owners face, uh, you know, as for a social media, online business and all those, plus it was really challenging to balance the, you know, the life and work ba- business balance. So I struggled for a while and, and then until I came uh, across um, the some programs and some trainings that I'm part of it right now that actually really helped me. It helped me really see 
how the online business works, how this, um, um, be, 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 there are things that I was not aware of before as a, as a someone who was working with corporate and also someone who was not really involved in um, online community. I was kind of the person, I was never on much on Facebook. I wasn't much on social media. So it was really a struggle when I actually started to build my brand, started to provide awareness, provide value. It was something kind of completely, I would say alien to me at the beginning. So these courses and these programs and coaching really helped me see um, what is it about and how to succeed in this um, community, which is online community. And that's why I am kind of started thinking while I started as a, a general life coaching business, and then I kind of niche it down to just helping businesses, or especially I'm thinking now about, uh, that was some of the things I um, I wanted to um, hear your input on that as well. I'm trying to niche it down to only helping moms with little kids who, how to balance um, a, a upside business with their life. So this is kind of uh, my um, uh, I'm so, something I'm I'm focusing on these days to help business uh, mo um, mothers with businesses side business businesses kind of succeed in their online um, community and and how to um, like promote their businesses, how to get leads, how to generate sales. And how to provide value or be actually uh, build their brand and be visible while they're still uh, uh, caring for their families, while they're still caring for their kids. So not only that um, social media aspects of it, but I'm thinking of also providing um, like um, personal development as far as like uh, time management, like how to do if eff things effectively, how to do be more efficient when you don't have, when you're crunching for time. Um, so things like that, I'm trying to focus, uh, as you said, in business, we are always growing. We are always trying to uh, find the right balance. So what is it that we want to go? So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, trying to grow into um, uh, this area of just focusing on, um, um, especially on moms, because I know from personal experience, I went through a lot of struggles of balancing it. I'm still, you know, learning and things that I'm improving but uh, so that's basically is my focus these days I'm uh, niching down to only helping moms but at this point uh, I'm helping everybody with social media how to promote on social media and how to build their business um, on social media yeah. and uh, I mean I love that you're open and intuitive to kind of aligning with the next direction and kind of focusing more on the topics that you want to teach moms, but based on your experience, and I'm sure we have moms in this community that are going to listen to this after. So definitely connect with Sarah and Sarah, get on a call, right? Because anything new we do, I th we think we know the problems we want to solve, but when you hear it from your ideal person, right? A mom that is going through specifically maybe with younger kids, a certain time and, you know, a phase and stage of that as they have different priorities, different problems that they're going through, um, you know, definitely connect to as many moms as you can. I always say that that is the best way to market research, anything that we want to do. If we want to pivot, talk to as many of your ideal audience, you know, as you possibly can, because through figuring out what people's challenges are, you're also going to be able to much more better and clearly articulate, you know, what is the solution they're looking for and also what is things that are holding them back so based on what you have learned you probably have a personal experience with that you being a mom small you have two boys right yeah I have two boys almost seven and five seven and five yeah that age when it's more physical they demand a lot more physical involvement so to speak because now minds are a little bit older 12 and 15 they're yeah. more independent so so you can do more things. So definitely the problems you're facing and the challenges you're facing definitely change. Just like business, right? At the beginning, you have different challenges and you grow, you have different challenges. So speaking to those challenges definitely will resonate with that mom that is just pulling her hair out or trying to build a side business, as you said, while also taking care of her family, trying to take care of her health or her, you know, self-care and all of that. And we know how self-care is usually the last on the list yep. for anything, right? So what are some of the things that you have encountered that you feel really pulled to, or, or even overcome that you feel you want to share with other moms? 
So um, a lot of uh, time when uh, moms, um, especially who wants to earn income from home, they start a business, they're told it's so easy, you can just easily spell the business. So I want to change that. I want be um, I want them not that it's say I want to say it's impossible. I just want to say to be realistic. It's not that easy that they, it, people tell you to. It's just easy. You can just do it. And especially if you're a mom with younger kids, it's always different. Uh, a lot of time um, moms say, oh, I, I'm a mom and I can do it. But it's a different if you're a mom of 18 years old than you're a mom of two years old. There's a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big difference. So I always I try to feel uh, a failure at the beginning, honestly, because when I was looking at other moms, I was like, oh, how could they do it? And I can't do it. But then I started learning more about their life. And I was like, okay, if you are have little kids, it's way different. So I try to more relate it's like, oh, I'm not going to compare because even though uh, we are all moms, if you are a mom of 18 years old, you have more time to spend on your business than if you are a mom of two years old. So I like to um, uh, share that, that my experience with other moms who are trying to build a business that, yes, it, it is going to be different for you. So start with the, with the right expectation. That's what I want to change. I want to change, help m m moms to see, yes, it's going to be not as easy as everybody says, but there are ways you can, you know, um, you can um, face these challenges and then build it in the right way. So start with the knowledge that, it is possible, but it's not going to be easy. So that's kind of a, a, a myth that it's easy to build an online business. And we all know that um, working in a, in a business, a nine to five job is completely different from building your own business. It's, 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 it's like way more challenging than it is you work a nine to five job. Um, and uh, so that I, I would like to, because something I faced in the beginning and also um, the time. A lot of people said, oh, it's easy to just spend two, three hours a day and you build a business. But that's a myth as well. If you already don't have an online prison, you have to work really harder to build that prison mm -hmm. first. And then it would make it easier later, probably. The, unless you want to grow further. Of course, it's different. But it's not if someone is never been to social media or never built a business on social media, I want to establish the right expectation that you need to focus hard on building your presence or building your brand first before you even start selling online business. It's anything online. So there are things I faced at the beginning that I understand now. I understand the need, what, what is the right order of things to do. I mean, it's not going to be just I post something on Facebook and everybody is going to buy. That's not how it works. So it's like, from my personal experience, that's why and that's one of another reason I want to niche down is because it's really uh, something I personally faced and I could, um, you know, um, convey that experience, share my experience exactly to another mom who's going through the same thing and help them, um, you know, uh, kind of bypass all the things I faced and kind of teach them the right way to do things instead of just them, them experimenting with a lot of things to learn it on their own yeah no absolutely we talked about that with tina before that everything we want to speak especially if you want to be authentic and um you want to build trust with with the right people that you want to help is you know um the experience has to speak so you, you have to go through it before you can actually help someone else there might be a couple of steps behind you so to speak so what i would suggest with that uh, sarah is kind of have some time to reflect and meditate on maybe you know your own personal journey with that right what are some of the things that some topics that you have helped yourself with that you kind of now can put in a framework maybe in a three-month program or a three-month you know journey that you can help a mom kind of beginning from point a to point z and kind of you know speaking about what are some of the main topics that you can teach on and then include the topics that you are now that you have learned and now you have something valuable to share with others right whether it's social media marketing how to build an audience how to balance your time between your family and your and your business right all these like brainstorm topics 
that you know you are personally very passionate about and you've also have a lot of experience with you going through them you know in your personal life as well and that will be a good start for sort of a, a framework that you have and you you can even speak about this more much more clearly because now you know exactly what it is right so um so i will help you with one two three four five six areas that you want to focus on and then the end result of that will be this the problem that you are experiencing now is this the end result is that and now you have the bridge the gap which is your framework that's going to help them close that gap eventually from where they are what is the problem they're experiencing to the result they're looking for so you're supposed to be the gap as as entrepreneurs we're always the gap in the middle that helps people go from here to here it doesn't matter what we're we're offering right based on our experience and also what we feel passionate about and all that good stuff so that's kind of what i would suggest to you to kind of have that time to reflect with yourself and put down a certain yes. framework and don't be perfect don't be you know um don't go into perfectionism like oh yes. i'm supposed to know exactly because as you work with every client like um you know Corey knows this every client that you work with you will personalize everything to them right i mean right. you have a certain framework but of course you got to hold the space and meet people where they are because that's the value of private mentorship or private coaching that you eventually yes. can scale later into a group and all of that but i would say that would be, you know, what you could start off with at the beginning. And if, if there's any moms listening to this, definitely I would encourage them to connect with you if their kids are within the age gaps that you are also mentioning, because it's completely different for sure to build a business in that age gap, which is why I stayed a corporate for so many years, because my kids were small. That was a big reason, because I said, I have to give them stability. They required a lot of physical attention and all of that. So I just couldn't do it all. So that at that phase, I just said, okay, here's what I'm going to focus on. And hopefully I'm doing it well. And now when they got older, I planned a plan ahead. I'm like, okay, now I'm in a different phase. Now let me plan for the next 10 years of my life, right? Once they get older, they go to college. After that, I'm aligning for something else. So we're always in movement. But we yeah. also have to know where our clients or our potential people we want to help are in their life phases and stages. Because everything changes when we are in the one stage and phase in life, I'm looking at different things. Right now, it's all about business growth for me. I don't look at anything else, right? Because I already know, you know, my, my kids are aligned. They're they're well. They're doing their thing. So that's kind of my focus, right? So if you want to speak to me and attract me as your potential client, if you, you know, use that messaging that resonates with me based on what I'm going through now, it's going to be a completely different message from, you know, maybe you are at a different phase with your kids, right? So that's very crucial. I think it's learning where people are is always a really great, um, a great way to clarify your message and message is everything. So definitely, definitely. And that's the, one of the reasons I'm trying to understand um, who I would like to target going forward so I can um, like adjust my message based on just my, based my um, you know, target audience. It definitely absolutely do that little homework see what you come up with we can always connect together and i can ask you a few other insightful questions to kind of grab you know the right information in a good way to kind of help you get that clarity and and go for it and build an offer and you know build a business around that for as long as you feel aligned with it doesn't mean you're not going to change it later or you're not going to yeah. evolve but yeah. i would say you know uh if you find that you're growing, that's why I say business growth goes with, you know, as you grow, you offer more things, you expand more, you have team, you have resources, you can do more, you can make more impact. But, you know, depending on where you are, if you're at the beginning, changing around your messaging, a lot of times you have inconsistency, so you don't want to do that. So if you have to pivot, do it slowly, look at the network you have, start with that. And then as you build the right audience for yourself, once you have the clarity of what you offer and who you want to serve, then you kind of build slowly on that as well. Um, but yeah, everything takes time, you know, one step at a time, but you know, you are putting in the right steps and nothing is wasted because you still have the relationships and the networks and the audiences that know you. And at the end of the day, I find that it's always about trust. You could be offering something else, but because I trust you as a person, you know, I might still be able to support you 
in in other ways right so it's not like i'm doing something new now so like whatever i did before it just goes to waste it's not like that so that's the good news you're just always building on top of things yeah so definitely it doesn't it never it never uh, you never scratch it off completely you just build it or you may be focusing narrow it more narrow your focus on something that is you know more aligns with our you know experience or maybe things we want to passion especially yeah so it definitely yeah. now it goes away and with a business model that can sustain our lifestyle because we're not all not one size fits all I have different goals you might have different goals Corey has different goals so I think it's aligning your business model to where you are and what you want out of life as you clarify your personal life first, those goals, um, then, you know, you know exactly what you need to be focusing on as you grow. Um, you don't have to do the copycat business model just because everyone's doing this or that doesn't mean that that's kind of, you know, where you start. But you want to always offer value. That's always a common denominator. I don't care how you do it, right? So you always want to offer value and also speak about, you know, how you are doing it a little bit differently from someone else that might be offering the same thing. But at the end of the day, if you do all the other components, you build trust, people just come to you because they know you personally, right? So they're not necessarily comparing, you know, I don't know what Alona does or I don't know what Corey yeah. does. She's been in my life more, so let me see what she has to say, right? It's just like that, so um, definitely builds on that. Sarah, where is it that people can find out more? more um, where do you want to direct? Where is your best content now for, for people? So they can value? always reach out to uh, uh, me, me through my website. It's um, sarahbackley.com. It's my name and, and .com, easy. And uh, I have all my Facebook and groups in there. I have a Facebook group, uh, Social Media Marketing Basics. Uh, so that's a, a private Facebook group. Well, I share um, a lot of value, value about social media uh, to help uh, small businesses grow, how to uh, generate leads and sales. And I have trainings and all those in, in that uh, group. So um, basically website and um, at this point, website and my private Facebook group is place um, you know, I would like everybody to go check it out. Absolutely. Definitely your website and your Facebook group because Facebook groups are great for community building. And if you want to build a community of moms that align on that main purpose, right? Um, that's definitely a great way to, to share value because the website I find sometimes it's just the website, but, you know, wherever they can come in and get to know you as Sarah as well is always a good, great way. So, I will include links for everybody, everyone um, here uh, inside the Life School uh, community. For a minute, I forgot the name of my group, <laughs> the Life School community. And uh, if you are a member of anybody who's watching this, I would love for you to come back to our February um, Community Expert Networking event. And I love connecting people. I'm a big connector. So come by. I'll introduce you to our community. And you might just, you know, meet a few amazing people that you can continue and further your relationship with. Um, and of course, the community experts here too. So that will be on February 24, actually. We usually hold these on the 25th, but next month, the 25th is on a Saturday. So we're going to do it on um, the 24, and I will add the, 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 I'll give you the Zoom link for that. So everyone can register and bring, bring other people, right? Connection, the more the merrier, right? The more we can network and and um, get to know more people, the more we can, you know, access uh, great relationships that we can further nurture. So um, definitely do that by next by our next event. I want to thank all my beautiful community experts for everything they shared with us today. And I wish you a great rest of your Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks so thank much. You. Have a great day.